Hello and welcome to our next physical science uh, video. Today we're going to talk about energy and how we describe energy. We are going to look at a few different things. We're going to look at different forms of energy and the relationship between energy and work. We're going to look at kinetic and potential energy and different types of potential energy. So first let's just look at energy. What is energy? Certainly you all have some ideas of what it is. It is the ability to cause change. If we did not have energy, nothing would ever change. In this picture, we have an example of energy causing change when this bat hits the ball and changes the motion of the ball. It's an example of energy causing change. Let's take a look at how energy and work are related. And let's think about that example again of the batter and the baseball bat and the ball. When that bat uh, applies a force to that ball through a distance, um, work is being done um, on the ball. Also, energy is being transferred to that ball. So we can think of work um, as a transfer of energy. Work transfers energy. Remember, work equals force times distance, force through a distance. And work transfers energy. Energy is the ability to cause change or the ability to do work. So we can think about them. Um, they're very, very similar. They're also measured in really similar units. In fact, they're both measured in joules. We measure work in joules and we measure energy in joules. Um, that tells us how closely related they are. Another useful uh, way of thinking about describing motion and describing objects and energy and work is through uh, systems. A system, essentially, is anything you can imagine a boundary around. So I made up two systems. Here's system A and system B. I'm imagining a boundary around system A. System A could be uh, anything. It could be the ball, um, the baseball. It could be a group of objects, like the entire solar system could be system A. Um, but when we think about systems, the important thing to remember is that it has a... a a boundary around it. If we were to think of, let's say, system A as being the bat in our baseball example, and system B as the ball, we could say if system A does work on system B, energy is transferred from A to B. Over here, energy is transferred from A to B if system A does work on system B. In other words, if our bat does work on the ball, energy is transferred from the bat to the ball. So let's suppose you turn on your iPhone and start listening to music. What happened? A change just occurred. Uh, it was silent, now you have music. Um, or you walk into a room, turn on a light, you have light, a change occurred. Um, these are really different from the example of a bat hitting a ball. They are changes though, um, and so they are examples of energy. Now, why are they so different? Because energy takes many, many different forms, and they really are very different. We have mechanical energy, electrical energy, chemical, radiant, thermal energy, and the most important thing to remember is that none of these are ever created or destroyed, and you guys all know this, it's, they're just converted from one form to another. For example, radiant energy from the sun is converted into chemical en energy through the process of photosynthesis that plants um, uh, carry out when they make their own food. Thermal energy um, is converted into radiant energy via fire. Uh, when you look at when that fire is happening, that thermal energy is is transferred into radiant energy, um, and vice versa. Radiant energy can be transferred uh, into uh, thermal energy. Heat. Uh, we have automobiles use chemical energy. They convert that gasoline, they break it down chemically, 
in order to use that and, and um, have energy in order to make their, the mechanical car function. Um, so all of these, you can look at these different um, examples as, as uh, energy can be converted from one form to another and uh, think about all the many different forms of energy that there are. Now let's compare and contrast um, two ways of thinking about energy. Is the object in motion or is it not in motion? Um, there's the question. If an object is in motion, we call that kind of energy kinetic energy. It's, in, it's energy due to motion. Um, if it is not in motion, we're going to talk about some different kinds of potential energy. It is stored. It does not involve motion. An idea would be um, as this bicyclist is riding up this hill, there is kinetic energy that is happening here. This is an example of kinetic energy. At the top, if he were to balance himself perfectly still right there, resting, he's not in motion, but he has a great deal of potential energy at that point. It's stored. As he goes down this hill, he is now releasing some of that kinetic energy, that energy due to motion. So let's look a little more in detail at these two different kinds of energy. We're going to look specifically at kinetic energy first. It's really simple. The energy of motion. Kinetic energy depends <clears throat> on two uh, factors. The object's mass, m, and the object's velocity. How fast are they going? And you know this. Obviously, there's a lot more energy being transferred uh, if an object is going at a greater velocity or if an object has a greater mass. In particular, the velocity is uh, very, uh, very impactful on the kinetic energy because the velocity is squared. So it has even more of an impact than the object's mass. This is the formula for how we think of calculating kinetic energy. Ke stands for kinetic energy, m for mass, and v for the velocity of the object squared. So let's do a little example. Let's say we have a 0 0.06 kilogram ball. Um, that's about 60 grams. It's moving at 5.0 meters per second. How, uh, typo, sorry. How large is the kinetic energy from this motion? To solve this problem, the first thing we want to do is write down uh, what we know. Uh, we know that we have a 0 0.06 kilogram ball. That's our mass. So we know our mass is this many kilograms. We also know our velocity equals 5.0 meters per second. The next thing we'd like to do, we'd like to write down our equation, the formula we're going to be using. There's our formula. Kinetic energy equals one-half mv squared. And now we can simply plug in values to determine our kinetic energy. Kinetic energy equals one-half times my 0 0.06 kilograms for my mass, right? And then I'm going to plug in my value for velocity right here. So velocity is 5.0 meters per second, and I need to square that, squared. So I go ahead and I multiply 0 0.06 by 5 squared. So you can multiply this first, right, order of operations. I need to square the 5 and then multiply by the 0 0.06. I can get an answer for that and divide by 2 or simply multiply by 0.5 or 1 half, however you like to do your math, and your answer should be 0.75 joules. Now remember, joules, if I were to write out all the units here, literally joules is a kilogram meter squared per second squared. And instead of writing all of that down, we can simply write joules. So now let's take a look and shift to potential energy. Remember, potential energy is energy that is stored. Um, and here's some examples. Elastic potential energy. This is a really fun one. 
the elastic potential energy is stored because um, there is compression or stretching of an object. You know that when you take this rubber band and you stretch it and aim it at your friend, you have a lot of potential energy stored in that rubber band waiting to be released. Another example of potential energy is chemical potential energy. It's potential energy. It's stored in chemical bonds. And <clears throat> you know this, food is an example. Uh, there is potential energy, chemical potential energy stored in those bonds of the molecules in that food that gets released when you use it, when your body uses it and breaks it down. Um, gasoline is another example of chemical potential energy. It is stored until those bonds are broken and that energy is, can be released in a different form. Anytime you burn anything, that is an example of chemical potential energy being released. Chemical potential energy becomes thermal energy and radiant energy when it is burned. Here's an example. Methane looks like this molecule. When we put oxygen with that and we burn it, we get these very different products. Bonds are broken, bonds are, uh, new bonds are made. We get um, uh, energy being released as thermal energy and radiant em energy when we burn things. Now let's talk about another example of potential energy, and that is gravitational potential energy. Gravitational pot potential energy is due to the gravitational forces between objects. A lot of times we just uh, abbreviate that capital G, capital P, capital E, gravitational potential energy. You know there's gravitational potential energy between an apple dangling on off of the uh, branch of a tree and the earth. There's gravitational potential there. We define <clears throat> gravitational potential energy by this formula. We're going to talk a little bit more about gravitational potential energy right now because it is critical that you always use a reference. And here I'm going to give you an example. Let's look at this, um, these plants on these shelves. We know that this flowering plant here has, uh, there's some gravitational potential energy uh, between this flowering plant and um, the floor, the surface of the earth here, right? So relative to the floor, this plant has some amount of gravitational potential energy. Say it's about 90 joules. What if we said relative to the ceiling of the room, what is the gravitational potential energy of this plant? Well, it would be probably something around negative 40 joules or negative 50 joules. It would be something different. Um, likewise, we can say the gravitational potential energy here of this plant is something relative to the floor um, or relative to the center of the earth. It would give us a different value. So we definitely always need to say um, reference what we are um, relating the gravitational potential energy to. Um, that's really important. So now let's do a little example using our equation. We know gravitational potential energy is equal to the mass of the object, g for gravity, 9.8 meters per second squared on Earth, um, and that's where we are, and the height. So that means the, uh, how far away the object is from where we are referencing it. So let's look at an example. A 0.5 kilogram plant is two meters above the floor. Um, what is the gravitational potential energy of the plant earth system relative to the floor? So what do we know? Um, if we write those things down, we know our mass equals 0 0.50 kilograms. G equals 9.8 newtons per kilogram or meters per second squared and our height equals 2.0 meters above the floor. Next, we write down the formula that we know relates all of these things that we know. Gravitational potential energy equals mgh, mass times gravity times height. Now we can simply plug values in to find out what the gravitational potential energy is. Gravitational potential energy equals, we can substitute mass in 0 0.50 kilograms. 
we can substitute our value for g right there, 9.8 newtons per kilogram. And we can substitute our value for height, 2.0 meters. When I multiply these out, I get 9.8, my kilograms cancel, and I get newton meter as my unit, which is the same as 9.8 joules. And uh, remember that it, <clears throat> a newton is kilogram meter squared per second squared. Um, <clears throat> and so this transfers into joules. So 9.8 joules is our answer. So just keep in mind, relative to the floor is important in our problem because I could measure the height from a different shelf or the ceiling or the surface of a water or someone's hand when they're throwing a ball. Um, so when we're calculating the um, gravitational potential energy, the height is measured from that reference level, whatever the reference level is, and it varies depending on that reference level. Here's a review, things you need to know. What is energy, relationship between work and energy, the units that we use, um, forms of energy, what's kinetic energy, how do you calculate it, what's potential energy, what are examples of it, how do you calculate gravitational potential energy. Uh, here, um, it's a picture of a volcano, Mount St. Helens. Here's some ideas for advanced proficiency. I look, Come up with your own ideas if you don't like these and... Um, I look forward to seeing what you have to show me in class, and uh, we'll see you later.